Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to discuss some of the key principles involved in creating a DNA profile. Okay, so so far we've introduced some, some of the, the concepts that um, in the non-coding regions um, of the DNA strand, that we've got highly variable areas called polymorphisms, where we um, identify a number of different, uh, yes, yeah, so some, some spots where they are highly variable between individuals. So remember, they're non-coding, they're not producing physical features, but they are part of the instructions inside your cells. And so for, for us, the fact that they are highly variable makes them really useful in a forensic context. So I'm going to use these colored buttons here to, to kind of model the how the different kind of techniques have, have worked through in the past. Okay, so the first technique, which was the, the, the one pioneered in you know, the mid-80s by, by Sarah Alec Jeffries, who was the, the first person to, to use DNA profiling in a forensic context, was called Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism, also known as RFLP. You can understand. Forensic scientists love their acronyms as much as teachers do. Okay, so the idea here with an RFLP kind of process is that it took the DNA strand that it had separated out of the cells, and then it used enzymes to cut the strand at particular sections. So let's say that this area from here to here was the bit that was we were that um, were forensically useful. Okay, so um, so what we would then have is that then um, that these enzymes would come along and they would tag at particular spots. Okay, so the enzyme would come along and it would identify here as particular spots to cut. Okay, and then it would go along and then it would identify this spot to cut. And what that would then do is that the enzyme would act on the DNA strand at that point and it would cut it. And so we'd end up with three separate segments. Okay, this bit, this bit, and this bit, just in our, in our model here. And then what we would then do is then use electrophoresis to separate. Okay, so... Um, that would then, you know, as we understand from electrophoresis, that it's based on charge and based on size. So the light little fragment over here would travel fastest, then the next fastest, and then much slower um, through electrophoresis. And these segments would be separated from each other. Okay. Now, the problem with RFLP as a, as a process, it was an excellent kind of first step. But the problem is that it starts with the existing, however much DNA you have is how much you have to work with. And that means, you know, that based um, on, on the original thing that needed about a 50 cent um, piece size, like blood stain, to actually be able to analyze this. So you can imagine that at a crime scene where you might have one drop or a little smear of blood, that having to have that much blood to be able to analyze is restrictive. Okay, that it, um, it it means that there's only some times that you can actually use the samples. And often in those first kind of cases that they had to do it by comparing with blood samples taken from the live kind of um, suspect. Um, you know, so you needed a significant amount of, of blood to be able to work with. Okay, and so then what we came to was kind of our next technique. All right, so let me, I'll reassemble the DNA strand. The next technique was known as um, polymerase chain reaction and short tandem repeat. Okay, so what we, we did with this um, technique is being able to actually amplify a section of DNA for analysis. So let's say that this point um, that we identified before is the section that we are particularly interested in. That's the, the highly variable non-coding region um, of the, the strand that we want. Now, what polymerase chain reaction does by mimicking the, the processes of um, uh, DNA replication that we, we tag it at this point and then we cut it. Okay, so that just as before, we cut the segment of the strand, but then we're actually able to use the existing nucleotides to build up more copies of that strand. Okay, so we can double it and then we can go on and we can make more. and so on and so on. We could go on and we can make another one and another one and another one. Every time that we do it, we are doubling the amount of the DNA that we are interested in um, and not making copies of the stuff that we're not interested in. So relatively speaking, you have a DNA sample for ready for testing, which is only the sites, you know, a, a very high concentration of only the sites that you're looking at here. Okay, and so then that makes it much easier for you to analyze by electrophoresis. It means that you can start with very trace samples and be able to create and or amplify the sample so that you get enough to, to measure. Okay, just like an amplifier will 
um, will increase the signal from an electric guitar that this, this sort of technique is able to amplify the areas we're interested in. And that the, the type of um, polymorphism that we're looking at here is called our short tandem repeat. Okay, so polymorphisms, generally speaking, could just an area where it changes a lot. Okay, the variable number tandem repeat um, is, is the kind of type that we're looking at here where it's a section that repeats over and over again. Okay, so <clears throat> perhaps this in this sort of area that it's this sequence that we're looking at, this series of seven kind of bases. And then we see, and then we get another, you know, blue, black, red, green, green, black, blue. Blue, black, red, green, green, black, blue. Multiple times over. Okay, so we're thinking about, it, so it's being 30 to 500 base pairs long. So it's not very, so it's quite short as these sections go. Okay, but they're highly variable. They're at, at well-known loci. So they're really successful for us to be able to analyze um, using this technique. Okay, so that we're able to identify a specific type of polymorphism that's really useful. We're able to use one technique that we can actually, um, that we can use to amplify the sample that we have ready for testing. Okay, so this is the sort of technique that we need to be familiar with at this point. All right, now we're going to just kind of quick overview of the different steps. Okay, so here are kind of the, the main sort of steps involved in the process of DNA analysis. So the first one that we have to do is we've got to collect our sample. Um, might be from blood or skin cells or hair, which might have a skin tag attached. If it doesn't, it's not useful. Um, you know, it might be from semen or saliva or you name it. Okay, so that we've got to collect our sample from wherever it comes from. Okay, and then we've got to extract the DNA and leave behind the rest of the cellular material. So um, that involves, you know, centrifuging. Um, we will actually break down the cellular structure so that we can extract the DNA and then we'll centrifuge to leave the rest of the components behind. If the sample is small enough that PCR is required, that's the point at which we will do it. We'll then use restriction enzymes to cut um, cut away any unnecessary sections to, to restrict it to the sizes that we need, cut it into the sections to analyze using electrophoresis. So we're using a gel, um, so it's called polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Okay, is the that's the technique. Um, and then once we have separated um, once we have separated the sample, we need to be able to identify the bands, you know, because they're not they're not coloured in their way, so that we need to actually visualise them somehow. So we these days, what we do is that in the process of um, cutting and tagging and um, uh, you know reproducing the strand, that we actually um, add fluorescent markers. That then, as it passes through, that then the detector, then the machine that's doing this will detect that signal, and so then it will it will identify the the, the section. Okay, or we might even, in the past, we would have been stained with silver. Um, and so actually kind of like on a glass um, a glass um, board or mat or something like that, a bit like old fashioned film technique. And then once we have, um, once we have a DNA profile from that sample, but then we are using it for comparison. So we might be, you know, so we're comparing it to known samples. If it's if it's a question sample from a crime scene, we're comparing it with you know suspects or comparing it with the victim or, or so on. So we're we're doing a process of comparison once we have connected that profile. Okay, so just a quick recap. So we're looking at the non-coding regions of the DNA strand that are highly variable, which exhibit a polymorphism. The sorts of types of, of polymorphisms that we're looking at are either a restriction fragment length polymorphism, the original technique, or now looking at a short tandem repeat. We've seen that we also have a technique to be able to amplify the sample if there's not enough for testing um, using uh, mimicking the DNA replication process. Once we have identified our sections and we've cut our DNA strand, but then we can analyze it using electrophoresis, um, electrophoresis, sorry, and then do the comparison process. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.